Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times and what's left of the paradise of Garfield, Texas on this gorgeous fall day. Tuesday, December, I mean Tuesday, November 20th, 2018. So uh, the little dog and I need to head back to work so I can make my $15 an hour shoveling dirt and gravel and moving rocks around to do my part for the global industrial economy. But before I go, just going to do what I do every day and that's look for the Doomer headline of the day. The we are so fucked headline. And so I started out on the mainstream media in my search. And uh, let's see, I had Dead Whale had 115 plastic cups and two flip-flops in its stomach. Uh, yeah, that was choice number one. Choice number two. Israel joins U.S. and others in rejecting U.N. migration pact. Talking about how there are now on this planet 250 million people, uh, various kinds of migrants. Yep, but we're going to leave the mainstream media and we're going to go over to Truth Dig to the, uh, <clears throat> to the alternative media and who has an article on the mainstream media by this, you know, this guy Lee Camp, uh, this comedian Lee Camp. He's a good guy. So what is on Lee's mind today in Truth Dig? The mainstream media is lying about the California fires. Take it away, Lee. I don't like accurately predicting the future, but it happens to me sometimes, and it's never a good thing. Not once have I predicted that I would stumble upon a great sum of money or that a friendly swirl would mysteriously leave a fresh, delicious scone on my windowsill. No, the things I've said that have come true years later have always been utterly awful, and the latest one has to do with California. This week, Donald Trump has continued to blame the horrific fires in California on forest mismanagement, basically saying that if the Parks Service had just raked up a few more dry leaves, then countless people, homes, and buildings would not have been incinerated. I unintentionally predicted this kind of idiocy. I said something similar in a 2011 stand-up comedy album titled Chaos for the Weary. To paraphrase, I said, You notice no matter how close they say the major effects of global warming are, it doesn't change how we all behave. Soon they will be saying, People in California are on fire, and everyone will be like, they probably live in a very fiery area. They're probably storing dry stuff in their homes, like old magazines and elderly people. And sure enough, here we are. People in California are on fire. And the president is saying it is because they stored too many dry pine needles around their homes. Trump is able to do this because most of the mainstream media are allowing him to fill a void, a void that represents the answer to these questions. Why is this happening? Why is our nation turning into one of the lower circles of hell? Don't get me wrong, the corporate media have, 
extensively covered that California is on fire. They have. They just can't bring themselves to say the words climate change very often. No, it gets caught in their throat like a dry falafel puck. They look like that they they look like they want to say it, but just can't. Like a dog that wants to tell you it has a thorn in its paw, but it's just impossible. Sancho Panza has no problem uh, telling me when he has a thorn in his paw. Take, for example, NBC Nightly News. You can't get a finer news program anywhere in the building where they tape. I, watch a f I watched a full six-minute segment last week covering multiple California fires. The destruction, the loss of life, they even had reporters on the ground. And yet, throughout the entire report, they never uttered the words climate change, global warming, or even simply, we are fucked. Instead, they made it sound like fires are a tragic yet common occurrence, and the cities will rebuild. Never speaking the words climate change while whole towns literally go up in flames is like covering the drowning death of someone and never mentioning he was being waterboarded at the time. The real cause of these fires is at least half the story, if not more. NBC host Kate Snow did say these fires are, quote, one for the history books. But I guess those history books are going to get shorter and shorter because 1,000-year fires are quickly becoming five-year fires. Saying these fires are ones for the history books implies that 20 years from now, the children in California will be reading about the Great Fires of 2018, but they won't. They won't be in the history books because in 20 years, the history books themselves will be on fire. And the Great Fires of 2018 will look like nothing but a warm day with a piña colada. Here's an example of what I mean. A headline from HuffPost read, quote, California wildfires this year have been breaking records. The state has experienced some of the biggest and deadliest wildfires in its history this year. Sounds pretty accurate, doesn't it? The only problem is that article is from December of 2017, last year. Did they go down in the history books? How often does everyone huddle under the blankets and take turns telling scary tales about the 2017 fires? Acting like each year's fires are a fluke that will never happen again, that in and of itself is denying climate change. It is lying to the American people in order to cover up that we are promoting a system based on big oil, big factory farming, and big environmental destruction. A new Media Matters report found the mainstream media only say climate change in reports about these recent fires 4% of the time. Now, some of you may be thinking, you can't prove these fires were caused by climate change. And you're right, I can't, but the Union of Concerned Scientists can. They said, quote, the effects of global warming on temperature, precipitation levels, and soil moisture are turning many of our forests into kindling during wildfire season, close quote. The scientists also pointed out that wildfires are increasing and that the wildfire season is getting longer in the U.S. 
In terms of forest fires over 1,000 acres in size, in the 1980s, there were 140. In the 1990s, there were 160. And from 2000 to 2012, there were 250. And as mentioned before, 2017 was California's worst wildfire season until 2018. So if they're not willing to talk about the obvious causes of our pop-up infernos, what was NBC Nightly News reporting on? Well, they spent a good amount of time on the firefighters, <clears throat> correctly informing viewers that these men and women are heroes and they're putting their lives on the line to try to save people they have never met. Good job, NBC. You only missed one thing. You somehow failed to say that many of the firefighters you highlighted are prisoners locked away in California's correctional system. Estimates are that 30% of the state's firefighters are prisoners, and it is clear from the uniforms that many of the ones NBC filmed were indeed inmates. <clears throat> sure, they volunteered for that job, but many of them are locked up for small crimes and see no way out of the misery and hardship of prison other than to volunteer for fire duty. It's kind of like how I volunteered to give my wallet and shoes to that guy with a gun when he casually noted that he liked my wallet and shoes. Furthermore, the inmates are working as firefighters for roughly one dollar per hour. They get paid less than the amount of money most people are willing to bend down to pick up if they see it in a puddle. But none of this is said by NBC Nightly News, even as they show video of the inmates fighting fires. This would be like showing Nike sweatshop workers in Indonesia and saying, these fine craftsmen are making your shoes. Oh man, do they love making shoes. They volunteered to do it. <coughs> are you starting to get the point? Kate Snow's job, like most of those in mainstream media, is to cover up your reality. Her job is to make you think we live in a system that can recover from this carnage without large-scale changes, without a new economic paradigm that does not reward waste and planned obsolescence and profiting off the lives of others. <clears throat> Generally speaking, the job of mainstream corporate outlets is to ignore the harsh reality that our endless consumption and furious appetite for fossil fuels are <coughs> burning our country, turning it into a desert wasteland, and the easiest response is to throw slave labor at the problem. On the other hand, it is the job of you and me to see through the propaganda, through the spectacle and the bullshit, and to fight for a better world. Maybe it will help if I predict that 20 years from now, we will all have woken up from this mass delusion and switch to a sustainable, green, egalitarian economic system. It's about time I had a positive prediction come true. Yes, a positive prediction. So uh, after all of Lee Camp's trash-talking the mainstream media, <clears throat> I'm going to change shirts now and, and go over to that other channel, Collapse Chronicles, and we are going to see how the New York Times is weighing in uh, on climate change as this planet uh, heads towards
collapse. But you'll have to go over to Collapse Chronicles to see uh, how the New York Times sounding more and more like Lee Camp and Truth Dig coming up in one minute over there on that channel. Bye, guys.